So one of the questions that still hangs over this nation is that of just how many are we? Are we 160 million? Are we 200 million? Are we 206 million? Different figures have been thrown out there. All of them estimates. And this morning, we're going to be tackling that big question. But this is not the first time, really, that we've tried to approach uh, this question of census in this country. We have tried pre-independence, but we'll focus on the ones we've done post-independence. And the earliest that's after independence was in 1962. That was the first time we attempted what is called census post-independence. Now, this was a very controversial one. I mean, we're just a young nation trying to keep count of how many we are, or we were at that time, but the results were not quite accepted on allegation of politicization. But at that point, the provisional result was that Nigeria was 45.1 million. Of course, that was thrown out. And a year after, it's really interesting that that happened immediately, one year <laughs> after, you know. Um, critics claim it was by negotiation rather than enumeration. We'll find out the details of that. The reason for that, you know, in this conversation was the difference in negotiation and enumeration in enumeration. <laughs> well, they, at that, that said, we were 55.6 million at the time. And fast forward to 10 years after, we okay. tried to conduct another census in 1973. Well, this one was not published on the ground of what they called deliberate falsification. Again, the purported result was 79.8 million Nigerians. Interestingly, just about a year or so after an attempt was made to, to conduct another one, mm -hmm. but was jettisoned for some reasons. Oh. Um, fast forward, okay, so how many years is this one? It's 20, be... almost 20 years after. For, for 14. Oh, this is tricky. Mathematics. <laughs> Almost, I mean, about 18, 18 years. years, actually. Okay. We conducted another one all over the country, largely scientific, unacceptable. Uh, we won 89 million in 1991, according to that result. And then finally, 2006, we conducted another census. This one, we tried to upgrade it. We used GPS satellite imagery, machine readable forms were also deployed. And that's how we arrived at 140 million. Yeah, those who are still asking questions, well, are we really, what, was that even scientific? And then that contest started. Who is, where do we have more people? Is it Kano or Lagos? In fact, let's break it down for you. Uh, let's give you the top 10 from that one, just to set a background so we understand what we have on our hands this morning. It's a big, in fact, one of the biggest topics now in the country. So the 2006 census came up with this result. So we broke it down, top 10. Kano led with 9.4 million mm. according to that year's census and you know the rest is is, is just there but you know uh, for for those who are interested those are the figures that we have top 10 most populous states yeah. not cities states in the country as of 2006 and there are speculations now that lagos which came second on this list is about 20 some say 22 million now so not to worry. I mean, the figures can get you lost. But we have someone who is going to walk us through what the politics, the policies, and, of course, the implementation of all of these uh, ideas and suggestions. We're joined on the program right here in our Lagos studio by Mrs. Bimbola Salu Andei, who is Honorable Federal Commissioner, National Population Commission. She was acting chairman of the National Population Commission between 2019 and 2020. Madam, it's good to have you on the program this Thank morning. Thank you very much. And happy Easter me. Monday. Same to you. It's great to drag it's you out a, on the Easter <laughs> Monday. No, it's always a pleasure to be on channels. Isn't it? Even, yeah. Aren't you supposed to be on holiday? We can't be on holidays. Oh, really? You just said it too. This is a very, very important national assignment. That's okay. And so all hands must be on deck. We want to make sure this time the figures are reliable accurate and verifiable because it, it's always a, a point of controversy and we try to chronicle the build-up from 1960 mm -hmm. how it continues to be a controversy even till today so but walk us i mean down memory lane why has it been difficult to conduct a census last time was 2006 16 years after when the un actually prescribes that it should be done 10 years in fact it says five years to be more accurate so why has it been difficult well i'll be honest with us here because mm -hmm. nigeria belongs to all of us in Nigeria, census has been largely politicized, like you said. I recall as acting chairman, when I appeared at the 
Senate wants at the House to defend our budget, I did say to them that we would appreciate that census taking is also regularized in law, mm -hmm. just as elections. We all know that whatever happens, election takes place every four years. But we don't have that in Nigeria. The periodicity for census taking is yet to be fixed by the law. And that's why it's left to the winds and caprices of whoever is in government, which shouldn't be, because census, even though it affects a lot of political decisions, it is not a political activity. It is an economic activity. It is an activity that takes a nation to its next level. So it should never be politicized. And that's why, with due respect to every one of us and to everybody listening to me, Nigeria is where it is today. Is, is, is this is the foundation of development for any nation. And because we've missed it, that's why we are here, where we are today. This is, this, is, is this fact lost on the authorities who are supposed to, for want of a better word, champion the course of NPC? Well, the way I'll see it is, is it is also, I think it's a multifaceted thing. For example, in the Constitution, we, uh, the, the National Population Commission is the only government agency that is allowed to take the census, but the periodicity is not fixed in it. I recall when I as acting chairman again, and I had to attend the African Union meeting where I was made the chairman, Nigeria was made the chairman for population and development. The issue they kept on asking me was, why have you not fixed, why there is no fixed periodicity for your census taking? AU is also very interested because, you know, Nigeria is seen as a giant still, mm -hmm. and whatever we do affects other nations. And I did say to them that it is because of that lacuna in the constitution. What we now need to do, and I'm happy I want to thank the current assembly, they're also looking into it now. They want to fix the periodicity. That's number one. Number two, why I've always felt that our census would always be subject to litigations, politics and all that is, even though the National Population Commission is one of the agencies designed and designated by the Constitution to be independent, I do not think we are totally independent. Because if you go to other parts of the Constitution, it says that when we conduct the census, it must be subject to the approval of the Council of States. We are appointed by Mr. President. If what I do is subject to the Council of State, you, you understand what I'm saying? Is that then the root? Sorry, Kade, Is that then the root of the politicization that you're talking about? I, I want to say it's part of it. I'm being honest because I want Nigeria to go. This is the truth. Because if we are like INEC, when INEC you conduct election, you can go to court. If the court says it wasn't proper, there is a re-election. There is no provision for a recount of the census. So even if the tribunal say. Like in Lagos State, the last time, a lot of states went to court and the tribunal agreed that some places were not properly counted. But no, the law does not have the power to order a recount. That's also not very good for us. If these things are put in order and people know that, okay, if you count me, I don't agree and I'm certain we're not 10, we're just two and you're calling us 10. If we go to court and the court says it's true, they're, ju they're just um, two, they are not 10, and you can do a recount, but we don't have that. The law is like in that area also just, it cannot bite, mm. it can only back. So let's get into this. I, I mean, I'm glad you, you give us that, um, that retrospective view so that we can understand where we're coming from and understand how to approach this current one. So, I mean, the Council of State again has given an approval. Let's conduct census next year, have some pre I don't know what it's called, pre-planning or piloting this year. But what is quite curious, madam, is the fact that census was meant to take place May this year. In fact, it was budgeted for 177 billion naira. The chairman of the MPC had spoken about this, said it, we're going to conduct census May 2022. What happened? Let me say this to you. When the national population, we've been shouting we want to conduct census. We've been working towards it. The chairman is right. And we thank Mr. President for making that money available. But in census, until Mr. President gives a proclamation, as the Council of State has done now, we cannot. They, mu they must give us a date. It's not like elections. Even though we know we're ripe for census, and Mr. President appreciates that, and Council of State, that's why they have now come up to say, okay, you want to do 
it in May. We also even thought we could do it in November. I can tell you that. But then, in their own wisdom, you know, they have looked at everything, the elections are coming, maybe a lot of things, and they say, now you would have it in April. We're still very grateful, at least, because when there is a census, when there is a count of your people, it's not just numerical count. It's a count of the characteristics of everybody living in your nation. And that also helps you to protect the integrity of Nigerians. Because then you know who is a Nigerian, then you know what we do, what we need. When the, it amuses me. Every year we produce budgets, states produce budgets, ministries produce, on what is the, on what basis? Mm. It should be from the data, because the census is the mother of all data. It should be from the data produced originally by the census, then others take from there. Is there a way um, to insulate this exercise from vagaries of politics as, you know, it had been subjected to, so to speak, in previous counts? I want to say technology is the best way. And now, like you did say, this time we've improved on our technology. We've got the, we've carried out enumeration area demarcation in about 98% of Nigeria, even in some parts of Borno State. About how many percent, sorry? 98. Oh, interesting. Yes. We just have about two or three local governments remaining. So you're really ripe for this thing. If they we say conduct ripe. this next month, you're able to do that. It can't be next month, let's be honest. I'm just <laughs> saying, just, just to put this in proper context. No, because you see, census is a process of processes. You have to have a lot of, you know, we have done the pretest, first and second pretest. We have to do the trial census. There are a lot of things you must do before you get to the actual and the main census. That's why it's described as the mother of all data. Because in census, every data that you can think of is put in it. That's why we have over 70-something questions that we ask. And now we're using technology. We have the PDA. We've already carried out our enumeration area demarcation, quiz uh, satellite imagery, and then the GPS tells you. It's not like before, where you just keep going to street to street. The GPS tells you where you are. We can check if you actually got there. And they would ask you how many households have been here. Channels has been wonderful, being a voice for us and that. We've spoken to people. We've asked the numbers of households. This time, we'll have the trial census, which is like you know what a trial is. It's like yeah. a mood census. That's what we're planning to do. So walk us through the process. I mean, we understand how voting takes place. We've had to, we do this for years. A lot of us should get maybe a certificate of voting because <laughs> we've gone through it. We know it. But for census, it's quite tricky. Some people are new to this. I mean, 2006, someone born then will be 16 years this year. So clearly a lot of people don't understand. What is the process this time around? What, you said 70-something questions will be asked each yes. household. So would you just say how many are you in your family? Did tell you 50 no. you put 50 down how many wives i have 24 is, is that how it's going to work this time no census have, doesn't work like that and that's why we had to do the architectural foundation we laid the architectural foundation the enumeration area demarcation is actually the architectural foundation with that we have divided the whole country into smaller smaller units that can be captured by just two a pair of enumerators within that specific period. Recall that for every census in Nigeria, there's usually a holiday of about seven days because you must all be where you are, yeah. you know, so that we can count you. Because what the census does is to tell you how many people live in channels, how many live in the estates, so that we know how many we want to give cameras to, how many we want to give seats to. So we must meet you where you actually live. I'll come to another painful aspect, why census is almost not very accurate in Nigeria. And that is the census migration culture that we have, especially in Lagos State. And it hurts, because Lagos State is burdened with a lot of pressures, traffic, jam, electricity, water, roads, everything. But when it's time for census, because Nigerians believe that the more we are in my village, the more allocation we get from the federal government. So they move from, from Lagos, we are their children's school, they work in the banks, their wives work here, they live here, their grandparents, everybody, they move back to their states. This is very wrong. I think it should be criminalized. So people should not move pre census. They shouldn't move. It should be, census migration should be criminalized it, if we must get our developmental policies right in Nigeria. Isn't that to say that the, the, the 
quantum of information or education about it is is not as much as it ought to be i remember i think we we, we shared this you, yes. know, you know song that some musicians actually <laughs> produce a song to educate people about the senses i don't hear such noise these days and i'm pretty sure there is a number of people watching us right now who are wondering really you mean you've covered 98 percent of local governments in nigeria and i'm just hearing about it now so Perhaps there is the need for that communication to go round. As people migrate for census, so do some migrate for elections. So is there a way, how, how was the level of, what, what's the level of education, not just inform, informing people, what's the level of education been like? What kind of challenges have you had, what kind of pushback, what kind of information have you sifted from people in the process of getting this done? You're accurate, you're really correct. Are the Nigerians are yet to truly understand what we do. You know, it even amuses me when people hear National Population Commission, they even say it's only census we do. We don't. We talk about the vital statistics of the nation, the age, the school, the birth rate. We start from entry to exit. When a child is born, we register the child. When the child marries, we register marriages. When the child migrates from one state to the other, or he leaves Nigeria, or he comes in, we register. And then when the person dies, from entry to exit. But these things are not known. But I can assure you that the National Population Commission this time, the chairman has promised that we would really have a robust media coverage to educate people like you said and that's why we're grateful to channels as always because you are a huge voice we need you more at this time to help us make nigerians understand the importance of census because as you have observed when people understand the importance they then tend to be less political about it they know it's for their comfort it's not for allocation at the, head, uh, the, national, uh, uh, the national government, it is for their own comfort, it's for every local government to be able to plan. Because if in my local government, for example, I'm from Ali Mosho, if my chairman says, if I, if I, National Population Commission, tells my chairman that 10 children were born in the year 2020, mm. and then he tells me in his budget he wants to provide for 100 schools. And I know he's lying, isn't it? That there's going to be a bit of corruption. Census data will check corruption. Census data aids development, um, the development of any country because we give data that helps them to formulate policies right. that would lead to better development of the people. What, what happens in the situation where, okay, let's paint a scenario. So, um, I live in Lagos, and I'm going to have seven free days, seven-day holiday, so to speak, um, for the census. Let me steal this time to go visit my people in the village. I get counted there. Meanwhile, you have come to my place in Lagos, and um, you have been told that there are 10 people living in that house. I was at work when you came. They when you now come for the proper census in April 2023, I will be in my village. I will not be at home, so I will not be counted. Take us through that. My, my colleague was asking you about the process. So in the event that such a thing happens, what are the implications? The implications are really bad, and that's the truth. That's why we're saying that census migration should be criminalized. If during the enumeration area demarcation, which we had started since 2015, and we've just done an update in a few weeks ago, and we've been to your house, and you've told us there are 10 households, and then I come back and I only meet two households, and we note that, that's during, because in census, we speak to everybody. In enumeration area demarcation, we talk about household. It's in is a catering arrangement. I did say that here. Yeah. How many of you eat from the same pot? That's what we do. So that's how we decide, okay, once we get to a threshold, we say this one enumeration area, we move on to another one. So in a local government, you can have 1,000 enumeration areas, and they will begin to post enumerators there during census, mm -hmm. a pair of enumerators. You go here, you go here, you go here. So if we are, we're supposed to get 1,000 households, we meet 200 households. We record each person in the household during census. Everybody is spoken to. If a child is born on that census day, we also record that child. You we, have to see the person. We must see you during census. During enumeration, we don't have to see you because that is by sampling. It's just 
and aggregates we're looking for because that's it is aggregated data enumeration is a disaggregated data now during census we want to see everybody and when we want to see everybody you've gone to your village because it's a holiday and then the enumeration chart is tampered with and census is a real chart that the government must work with because it's the mother of all data and we give that to your government and the government says no there are only two people living here so they only need two roads isn't it but you've gone to your village and your village thinks there are 10 people living there and your governor is trying to build 10 roads when actually he only needs to do two roads corruption on that side corruption on this side your shouting is not enough here he has more than enough there and then planning becomes upside isn't, down. Isn't that why it, it might be good to work with states on this one? I know some governors have, have tried to conduct this. Yes, it's, it's not constitutional, but isn't it important to have some sort of handshake with governors? Because after your own process, the people will come back and states have their data as well. We'll get to that. But do you look to some sort of collaboration with states. We do, we do. We, the, our first visit, the chairman's first visit, the chairman of the commission, his first, his first visit, and I was in the entourage, was to the, um, the DG of governors, um, His Excellency Fayemi. Nigeria Governors uh, Forum. Yes, a Nigeria Governors Forum. Um, His Excellency Governor Fayemi. Governor Fayemi, we went. And recently we've been visiting elder statesmen, past heads of states, and all that. We would actually visit every governor. We intend to talk to them, we intend to talk to the Nigerian Governors Forum mm -hmm. to educate them also, to plead with them also, that they let their people know that it's better for them to stay in their places, even for their own integrity, because they can plan better and whatever they do can be seen better. Because if you ask them to come in and people say, You told us you would do this and you're not doing it, just because your data is inaccurate, you cannot plan properly well. <sighs> A lot of stops we have on this yes. conversation because it's very important. Yes. We, we definitely will not exhaust it. But help us understand this. So we have different ways we gather data. All right. So we have the current NIN. We have BVN, bank verification number. We have uh, the one you get from the social investment program. I think they have a database already. Driver license. F FRSC driver's license. You have um, INEC, of course. INEC has its database as well. And it can go on and on. States have their own. Also, Lagos, other states, they have, you know, database. So, really, can't we harmonize these data? Save through the ones, of course, you see double registration, definitely, there will always be overlaps. Save through and come up with our figure as the census of Nigeria. That's very true. It can be harmonized. And the best way to harmonize is to, first of all, go through the mother of all data. And that's the census. But, but we have these data scattered Those questions across. are also asked during census. If you have an NIN, it is stated. That is harmonization. We're doing that as well. And you would recall, I did say here, that INEC told us then they were waiting for the result of our enumeration area demarcation so that they can know how to set up the polling units. It's also used. Everybody uses the census data. So clearly doing this after election is counterproductive because INEC will not, not be able to properly No, no, no. Plan. We've already done the enumeration area demarcation. INEC has that. So they just want to see where is more populated, where you have more households, where to put these polling units, where not to put polling units and all that. So that's why we had to finish it up. We finished last year, December, but we had to do an update of those we did not use the digital method mm -hmm. to conduct. That's how we had to do an update because we had started since 2015. Then we're not fully digitalized, but now we are fully digitalized. So we had to go back to ensure that those ones comply with digitalization. But why is it hard, pardon me, but why is it hard to harmonize data in Nigeria? Have a central pool. I mean, we have so much. INEC boasts of oh, close to 90 million now. The NIN, the BVN, the social investment you just program, said it. The reason it is hard is because there is no accurate census. Census is the mother of all data. INEC data, this data, they're all children of the census. Once you have the foundation right, Everything will fall in place, but census has not been gotten right. Is that not the truth? We all know that. If this time, and we hopefully know we will by the grace of God, we get everybody counted in Nigeria and we know your demographic characteristics this time, you will be sure that name everybody, they will just flow on it. And this is how it is done. And that's why some countries would now take um, 
census, online census every five years. Because you can do that. Once your foundation is good, you already know. We will now do the birth registration. You just know that, okay, numbers of children born in so-so year, numbers that die, you take it out, migration, you net it off. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. Every other survey is based on the census. You know, there are those who, are, who, who have also asked, my colleague asked, you know, and you just referenced uh, that INEC also has used some of the data you have uh, gotten so far for this election, for this census. And there are those who are wondering, and you also said that you're going to be visiting the governors. We are in the process of elections. Isn't there a significant influence or impact of the election processes and procedures or preparations on this census? There will be, because Nigerians are more interested in elections than the census. This is the truth. We see elections as do or die. But census is a peaceful process. And that's why we need the governors to also help us talk to their people, to the local government chairman. I know that in Lagos State, the governor is really backing us up. He wants accurate figures. So he's talking to the local government chairman, and I discuss with them often. And I will want to believe that every colleague of mine in every other state, you're aware that we have a federal commissioner representing each state of the federation, including the federal capital territory. I am very certain that every other commissioner is doing the same thing. These are grassroots things that you probably will not see on the face. But the aspect I agree with you is our media has not been as it should be. We're not talking as we should. But you can be sure we're hitting the road from now. The chairman has assured us. Well, a, a former chairman of um, MPC uh, had described all the censuses in this country from 1816 as a mess fabricated, cooked up and unreliable. In fact, he had insisted that the past national headcounts were deliberately conducted to favor a particular section of the country. This is something we hear time and again. I'd just like you to speak to that because the quotient of trust is important in this whole process. So what do you say to that? Well, he sincerely, the, all the censuses in the past have been bedeviled with arguments and non-acceptability. The 2006 census that we felt was acceptable, Lagos went to court, Adama went, a lot of states went. So his opinion is true to that extent. But the truth again is this. This time, like I said, we're making use of a lot of technology. Technology has come to aid us a lot. If you get somewhere with your GPS, if you don't get there, the GPS will show it, isn't it, that you were not in this village. The satellite imagery is clear. States can also, governors also have to be very interested, like you said, sir. They must come to and say, look, these are my local governments. These are my areas. Be sure they are counted. Local government chairmen, like in South Africa, I read up about them. In South Africa, it is the, represent, the legislators that go from door to door to talk about census because it's important to them. But here, we don't have that. So we want the legislature the, the, to be interested. The local government chairman must be interested. The councillors must be interested. The market women must be interested. Everybody must be interested. Would you be so that at the end of the day, if we all do it together, even if where there are mistakes, because we're all human, we can be easily corrected and come out with the best. All we want for Nigeria is to have a perfect, reliable, verifiable census. So quick issues. Would you be taking biometrics as well? That's a very important question. We're looking into it seriously. The commission has not decided. The, civil, the, the technocrats are bringing up opinions on biometrics and the type of biometrics. You know, biometrics also has its own variants and all that. So and the all commission that. is yet to fully decide on that. What the commission has decided on now that is that it's a digital census. And you know biometrics is also digital, but the level of biometric we will take, the commission is yet to decide on that. Because I but think I'll come back here and let you know. Because the biometric component will be very vital to the trust. I absolutely agree with because you. Because we have it with INEC, we have it with other forms of gathering data. So if there's biometrics, people will say at least you can have double registration mm -hmm. with biometrics. And finally, yes, how accessible is data, at least the ones you have so far for, for the NPC, how accessible is it? it is, is it? for people who want to use it? Well, a lot of organizations rely on our data, especially multilateral organizations. Where can we get it from, the average Nigerian? Well, the truth again is that's why we're building a new library now, an e-library. We're also aware that in that area, the average Nigerian is not even aware 
of a lot of our data. It's only organizations. With the new e-library that we're building, people will be mm. aware now and they'll be able to use our data. Uh, because I've, I've gone to your website hoping to get the, the data, but I didn't quite see it and it was a downer for me. I mean, mm. it's our figures, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I but I promise things are changing. Okay, I will mm. keep tabs. Uh, so true. many areas to cover, but I we've know. tried to scratch the surface. Yes. Hopefully in the coming days, we'll talk more about this. But we'd like to thank you so much uh, for thank your you time and much. insight. Mrs. Bimbala Salu Hondeng, who's Honorable Federal Commissioner, National Population Commission. Thank she was acting chairman of the MPC 2019 to 2020. She's been speaking with us from our Lagos studio. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, Charles. happy Easter. Same to you. Thank you. So let's go on a break now. And when we return, we'll talk about an issue we have raised, which is elections. That's in a moment. Stay with us.